Hello YouTube, the stock market is failing, but not in the way you might think. Today we got a failed breakdown, which just means that we went down, we broke down, but we failed to hold it. Why? Because we're closing back above yesterday's low at 40724. So on the daily chart, we have a daily failed breakdown. But on the weekly chart, what do we have? We have a weekly failed breakout. So that exact same thing, but the inverse. We poked over last week's high, and then we lost it. So what do we do when there are conflicting signals? You might be very surprised to actually see that we actually ticked higher into green. We went from 50 yesterday to 53 today. So if you're feeling scared, make sure you watch all the way till the end of the video because I will make sure to leave you with some commentary and exact things to do going into the end of the week because tomorrow is the equivalent of Friday. So here is what I am watching. I know I've laid this out for at least a few days now. And uh, as long as this uptrend holds, that's all that I need. This is the seasonality chart. And I'm specifically looking at SPY and QQQ. S&P, it's holding. We look at the uptrend. It is rocking it. It is holding it. And we will review that in a moment. We can also note here that QQQ is holding. It's not uh, holding by a lot, but it is holding. Also, if we look here to the heat map for the one day, we note that, yep, Amazon, Tesla, some high flyers so far this year, they're pretty red. But when we look at the four-hour heat map, wow, well, it looks like nothing happened. That is right. Not a whole bunch happened after lunch. We pretty much didn't go anywhere. So the Bears were able to get some momentum in the morning. They got us down, but they couldn't hold it, which is why this candle looks just like a doji. There's not very much range uh, from the open and close even though the high of the day are off by about uh, the high is 4087, the low is 4058, about three bucks. I'm going to ask you for a huge favor, please, and thank you if you wouldn't mind uh, considering smashing the thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you're enjoying the content. We do put out videos every single day, and we're here to try to update you to make, update you, to make sure you have an unfair advantage against the stock market. All right, let's jump in a little bit deeper now. The last note that I have here is that it is QQQ versus DIA and XLV, XLE, XLU. What does that mean? It means that we're actually seeing participation from the rest of the market. Now the tech is no longer the only game in town. So if we look here to uh, performance for a three month, I don't know if that's actually going to be accurate here. We actually just want to look at uh, week to date. This might be a little bit harder to look at because it's a rolling five days. But anyways, on the weekend, we talked about a bear trap. Well, it looks like that's what's happening. We went into greed. It looks like we're still going up. And it looks like no one believes it because three out of four people do not trust this rally. That is exactly why I think, again, not I know, but I think as long as this uptrend holds, we can keep going higher. So we're going to look at that right now. And then I have a, a little bit of a cheat that I found today that I shared in our group. And I will show you in about two or three minutes here. But again, make sure you watch all the way till the end because we will review S&P, QQQ, we'll go over maybe Apple, Amazon, Goog, Amazon, NVIDIA, Tesla. We're going to go through some ETFs, but I want to just make sure that at the outset here, we're making it very clear for people to understand what's happening. So when we look here on S&P on the one day chart, we've talked about how we've broken the bear. We have our low, we got a bounce, and we're looking for maybe another bounce here. So we mentioned yesterday that going sideways would actually be bullish because when we look at that seasonality chart, it tells us that as long as we hold this range, but also make a new high. We got to go higher. We got to break for uh, 419. We have to birth a new bull market. New bull market is going to be at 418. So going sideways is actually bullish because we're in an uptrend. We've stopped going down, which is our downtrend here, and we're going up. So why does this matter? Well, it matters for a few reasons because our 50 MA is now, at least for tomorrow, right on key support. So as long as we remain over the 50 DMA, last time we did it for all of, I don't know, like two days, I'm not sure if this day closed above or below. Man, it wasn't that long. Three days above. One, two, three. Sell it. Um, this time, well, we spent one, two, three, four, five, six days above the 50 DMA. So as long as we remain over it, that's the cheat. If you can't draw trend lines, just if we're over the short-term price or the 50 DMA, we're bullish. There's also a lower gap here. So that means that there's actually been, been a gap and go. Those don't usually happen. They usually do get filled, but it can happen in time. What can happen? We go up. And then eventually we come back down and fill it later. That could happen too. Fill this gap right here. So we don't have to fill it right now, but they just usually uh, finish in time. Why is this important? Well, we can't fill the lower gap as long as we are over the 50 DMA. So if we come down and we bounce off the 50, we are still going to leave that gap on the chart. Okay, so the price action doesn't seem all that great, but what do we have down here for volume? 
nothing. Why? Because the Bears are already fully loaded up to the tits, right? They're fully loaded short, which means I don't really know how much fuel they have left in the tank. And uh, I'll, I'll make sure I leave you with that comment I left at the end, which is a little bit of a clue in terms of where the Bears are currently at. Looking here at a Q, 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 what do we have? Well, we have an uptrend, we got a bounce, and we're right back here. The difference here is that this is a breakdown. It's not a failed breakdown. So yesterday, we had uh, the higher low pattern hold. We had an inside bar, then a higher high. And now we got a lower high and lower low. We got back-to-back -back red days. So that just means that if we're going to crack this uptrend, like it's going to probably be tomorrow. So QQQ was looking a little bit soft. It could back test. Um, and we're already over those February highs. So as long as we remain above roughly the low of the day at 314, which is a threshold for me, I think there's still a chance. All right. So now let's go to that S&P chart I alluded to earlier. Um, let's go here, S&P. And then we'll look at the other ETFs to make sure we get a handle on what's happening here. All right. One minute. So we're going to look at a one minute chart. And usually I don't do this, but actually I'm going to go to ES because this is the chart I looked at before. So we're just going to remove the close. And we're just going to look in here to the session from about 11 o'clock. And the reason why is because after the open, I'm just noticing that um, there are attempts from teams, like meaning the bulls or the bears, to try to move the chart. And when we look here um, on the one minute chart, which again, is like a very short time frame chart. So just bear with me for a minute and I'll explain it. It's all red, 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 red. It's all red, which means team bears are trying to punch it down. They're trying to slam it down. They're trying to come in and slam it. What happens? Well, <laughs> we just go higher. So when we now look at a 15 minute chart, here's where the story gets a little bit easier to understand. So if we know that for a large part of today, they were just selling it in waves, right? Coming in roughly every 20, 30 minutes, coming in and trying to slam it, but can't hold it. So what happens? Well, um, you get, you're, you're going to notice these lower tails here on the 15 minute chart. And that led to the rally. That's where the bear, the bulls are just like, Hey, if you guys want to sell, we're going to buy it, but we're not going to overpay. Whatever you guys want to sell it for, like just give it to us. We'll take it. What happens? Low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. We're moving higher. And the volume is actually mostly dominantly green. What does that mean? Most people who sold today, uh, they lost money. And because they're slamming it only on a five minute chart, they're not, they're not doing it over a 15 minute or a five minute that tells me their motivation. Their motivation is to try to move the chart to slam it down. And because uh, we've looked here to the CFTC, we've looked at the short positioning. Man, these guys are getting hurt. We're barely red on the week. And that, I think that's because they're just finally starting to give, give up a little bit. So when we look here, we got uh, CFTC net short positioning. It's at 220 short. It's been growing. It's over 200K. This is almost a year position now. That's what I think is happening here. And then if we looked at what happened into the close on the one minute chart, oh man, biggest bar in the day trumping all of these previous red ones is a green one. What does that mean for me? It means that they bought all their position back into the close. They wanted to take it down. They had the breakdown, but they couldn't hold it. That's why it's a failed breakdown. Maybe now you have a little bit of context in regards to what a failed breakdown means. It means Team Bear won. They blew through the low of the day. They made a daily lower low, but they failed to hold it. It's a failed breakdown after they already have that weekly failed breakout. And what's so important here, again, we mostly look at S&P, but for me, I look at ES, look at the volume here, looks bullish, move off the low, hit my relative resistance, backed off to a pivot here at 4101, which is the equivalent of 410.64 on S&P. Again, these just have different numbers. So I'm paying really close attention here. We breached 4100 and we bounced. It's a dead cat bounce for now. We'll see if there's more in the tank. All right. And now as we're looking here at weekly charts, here's what might really surprise you. So S&P on the week, uh, we're down by about, look, we're looking at the numbers right here in the top. We're looking for just the uh, percent decline or advance on the week. We're down by about half a percent. QQQ, we're down by 1.5 or three times more. So NASDAQ soft, right? We, we have to be mindful of that. Now we're going to jump down here. What do we got? Gold, gold is up by 2.5. Bitcoin, uh, basically flat up by 35 bucks or 0.1%. Ether pumping up 6%. Now let's move down to... Uh, QQQ versus DIA, which I think is going to tell the story as we look at these next ETFs here. So we know we got a lower high, lower low, a weekly failed, uh, fa weekly uh, breakdown. Why? Lower high, lower low. We're down by about 2%. And this just means that the Dow should be stronger than the NASDAQ. So the question is whether or not um, we see the Dow green. And if it is, is that enough to offset the S&P? Remember, S&P is down by about half a percent this week. So if NASDAQ's down by 1.5, these other groups are likely going to have to be green. Let's look through them now. 
RSP, equal weight S&P 500, red, 1%. Okay, so equal weight for tech with everything else down 1%. Now we know DIA or NYA, New York Stock Exchange, 2,000 stocks, completely unchanged, down 0.04%. We look here to the Dow, it's up by 0.6%. Uh, IWM, red, right? Sell those small caps. We got a death cross here. Does not look good. Back to strong support. XLK, down by 1.8. Um, XLF, down. All right, XLV, whoa, up by 2.8%. Remember, healthcare was one of the top performers into the third quarter here. So it looks like, at least for now, they've built up their position and now they're punching it over. So healthcare is defensive. That's usually what people get into when they feel scared. XLV, gapped up. It's up by 4.2%. Elon would be proud. He loves energy. Moving here to uh, XLU or utilities up by 2.4%. That's a big move too. So this is also defensive. It's also what people like to buy when they think a recession's coming. SMH or uh, semiconductors down by 4%. ARC down by 6%. We look at uh, the DAX down by 0.7. So there you go. That's what I'm watching for today. If you want more insight in terms of what I am watching for, I encourage you to watch the video now queued up here on the left-hand side. If not, thank you so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow.